Hello everyone, my name is Michael, and today we're going to take a look at the third challenge in the Flare On 7 2020 CTF, titled Wednesday. If we take a look at the message here, it starts out with Be the Wednesday, and says to read the readme. So if we take a look at the readme here, um, it's reiterating Be the Wednesday, and it gives us a little hint here with the days of the week and dude in the middle. Okay, and then it has some extra instructions for how to run it in a virtual machine. Um, I actually found VirtualBox didn't seem to be working so well, even with these uh, accelerated graphics settings. So that might be uh, just a small hurdle to get over that I just decided to run it on my host after I verified it's not running anything malicious. So let's go ahead and take a look at mydude.exe. Now for the purposes of this video, I have replaced the uh, music with just silence. I don't know if it's going to cause a copyright issue or it's just going to be annoying with me talking over it. So we have a game titled Wednesday with this uh, interesting frog here. Okay, so it, uh, it's actually a game. Click dude. And okay, we have kind of a side scrolling and oh, okay, we apparently get reset after we hit a block. Do we need to jump over the block? No. Okay, so it's... Uh, I guess the M stands for Monday. Then we have Thursday, Friday. We need to jump over that. So we're kind of being the Wednesday. We'll see we have a score and a high score. And so our job is to win this game. All right, let's go ahead and close that. So for this challenge, I'm going to open it up in Ida. And we'll see here, it is, uh, it must be a game engine called NIM, because um, there's a lot of references to NIM. Uh, this is the entry point. We jump into the main, and there's a main inner to go into, main module. And here's where we start to see some of the setup of the game engine. Now, I've never really worked with a game engine too much, but just kind of th thinking about how it works, there's going to be a lot of setup, there's going to be a game loop. Um, kind of different uh, things to think about there. So we see there's some some uh, there must be some debugging symbols actually embedded so that Ida can pick up and rename some of these. Uh, we have some load function, new title screen. Uh, apparently there's a concept of scenes that they're setting up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and use since I have Ida Pro, I'm going to use the decompiler to make this a lot easier to read. Um, you can also do the same with Ghidra or I believe Binary Ninja. So if we scroll past through here, once again, we see some backgrounds, a play function that must possibly play some, the music or something, setting up some title screens. There's a main scene, new wind scene. This sounds interesting. If we take a look at this one, let's take a look at the cross references. Um, it's only being called in the, the function we're in right now. It's being written to. Um, and then it's called in a function that starts with update. So that might be a starting point to look here. Okay, so just scrolling up a little bit in this function here, we see where uh, we're setting the high we're setting some text for the high score, the current score. Uh, there's a score variable here. So this must be a function that's run probably every frame to uh, output the score on the screen. So we see, uh, in order to invoke the win scene, we need to get some type of uh, variable to 296. Okay. So that would probably be the score. Um, but if we look here, we see result equals... We have an object pointing into it and then adding to that. So this might be some, I would assume this is some type of uh, pointer arithmetic to point into an object that's linked to another object. Um, so this score variable must, must be stored somewhere with the object. Um, that's usually how games kind of work. They have like an, ob an object that has the character data and stuff like that. Um, so we can take a look through here and we see the score variable is a global variable and they have a previous score which must be 
it's, it looks like it's used for kind of optimizing so they don't need to redraw the score if it hasn't changed um, every single frame, 60 frames per second or 30 frames, whatever it's clocked at. Um, okay, so our first thought would be let's go ahead and hack the, uh, hack the score. Um, it must get re read and calculated somewhere else. And let's just go ahead and try to hack that. So for this challenge, I decided to try a tool I've never used before, Cheat, uh, cheat Engine. Um, it actually has a debugger function and it's it's kind of interesting to use for uh, kind of scoping out where the variable scores are and stuff like that so let's go ahead and attach uh, whoops I need to get the game running first let's go ahead and launch the game it's gonna always launch on my other monitor first okay so we've got the game started we go into cheat engine let's attach to my dude yes I want to attach the debugger Okay, so let's start out with, we know where the score is supposed to be. If we go ahead and double click this, we've got this address is the score. Let's copy that, add the address manually, and we'll call that the score. While we're at it, there was a high score. Here we go. Let's take a look at the high score just so we can verify what we've got going here. High score. All right, we see they're both set to zero. Let's go ahead and watch those values while I enter the game. So we duck, we duck, and we see it is incrementing correctly. It's going to two and three, and four. And then if I go ahead and die, we see our score changes, but our high score didn't. Okay, so. Here's one feature that's kind of nice with uh, Cheat Engine. You can actually enable a speed hack. Um, so I can kind of use this to artificially pause the game. Um, that makes it a lot easier for debugging and uh, trying to tweak some values while you're playing it. Uh, we can also change the speed and make it slower if we wanted to uh, make it easier to jump over obstacles and such. So that's pretty handy. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, let's go ahead and change that score. So uh, we believe our win condition is 296. Let's go ahead and artificially change that to, let's say, 294. Alrighty. So then we're going to disable our speed hack. And I messed it up. Here's where it makes sense to slow it down a little more. All right, 294. And we're going to slow-mo. Make it under the goal. And make it under the goal again, 296. And what's going on here? We are not triggering anything. We've definitely gone over the goal. So, there must be something else going on here. Let's go ahead and artificially pause the game. Okay, so, we must be wrong. This must be not directly correlated to the score. Okay, so, let's go ahead and, how about we change this value? Let's not look for 296 anymore. Uh, let's artificially change that to a different value. We'll go into the memory view here, and this just gives us uh, kind of like what we would have in a debugger, like x64 dbg or, or ida pros debugger or something. <coughs> so let's go ahead and go to, what was my memory address in ida? 433fad, go to 433fad. Okay, so here we have uh, 296 and hex is 128. Let's go ahead and double click that. Oop, not the comment. Let's just change this to, I don't know, 4. I think I can reasonably do that. Disable the speed hack. 1, 2, 3, 4. Hey, we win, but... 
there's no flag. Huh. Alrighty. So there is another trick up this game's sleeve. Um, it takes quite a bit of reverse engineering to find exactly what's going on. Um, I honestly forget where it is. But there's another update function that actually is in real time basically tied to the obstacles. Um, you can see here, this seems to be some logic for um, taking the day index, calculating whether you jumped or um, or ducked correctly. And what's actually going on is I believe these obstacles are fed into a sort of hashing function. So in retrospect, you basically have to complete the game to 296. Um, I won't do it for the purpose of the, this video, but if you actually change this value to, say, 40, you'll actually start to reveal the flag. Um, but it won't show the entire flag, so that kind of suggests that it's being calculated on the fly. Um, I think I actually artificially changed it to, like, 80. Actually got a score to 80, and I got, like, five characters or something. So that would be a way to scale it, since you know that it ends in at flare on. Um, so you don't need like the last 10 characters or whatever. So you could lower the score and still get it, but that still requires playing the game. Um, that's, that's boring. So if we take a look at, let's, uh, let's kind of think of another way we can attack this game. Um, so we, we can't just change the score. There's something protecting that. And actually I think there is like a double check system. Uh, we can't change what the wind condition is. So, what about messing with the collision? Um, yes, I want to keep those variables. Um, in order to, like, die, you have to collide with the block. Um, either you either collided with the block or you didn't jump when you're supposed to or you ducked when you're not supposed to and so on. So if we take a look here, uh, we want to look at the score. When do we get a point? Uh, and we see here it is in the on collide. Uh, these other ones reset to zero, show zero. There's an update here. Here's where we're reading it. But we actually write to it other than zero in this collide function. And we see it's written here, which is just itself plus one. Uh, it looks like they check for an overflow, so that's that's interesting. Okay. Um, check for the overflow before we actually increment the score, so we don't break something. Alrighty, so what is the condition for this? We have a check here. We have two objects. We have the two input objects, A1 and A2. Probably a character in a block or something. Um, we compare an offset, the same offset to each one. Um, so maybe that's their height or their value. I don't know. Uh, but I just know that we're comparing this. And if so, we get a point. Okay. Otherwise, we play a sound. Okay. So if you actually debug this, I won't do this on video because it takes too long. If you actually debug this, one of these is like playing a death sound. Um, I believe if we, yeah, if we look up here, there's also here, they you play a sound. That's basically the do sound. Um, so the way we're going to hack this game is we're going to change this condition so that we always get a point. Now, this this function's a lot more advanced. Um, I think there's actually, uh, if I change these to character, there's actually the word check. So I don't know if there this might be some type of anti-cheat. That's my assumption. Um, but we there's actually conditions for, you know, if you think about it, the game needs to know you were supposed to jump, but you didn't jump, and so on. We can actually change this this condition right here. So, let's open up Cheat Engine. Let's go to Memory View. And this is at... Go to 432358. Okay. So this is where it jumps. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the comparison. 
we're comparing EDX to EAX, which is these two values. That's where it's uh, doing that pointer and grabbing the whatever these two values are and comparing. Let's go ahead and compare e whoops, compare EAX to EAX, which is always going to be true as long as it's not zero. And let's disable our speed hack. Okay. And here's where the magic happens. All right. We are still scoring. We haven't died. Our score is incrementing. And we basically overrode the check whether you need to duck or whether you're ducking correctly. So we can actually just duck through all of these blocks. Now, the actual, uh, to let this play, uh, to get to the score 296, it takes like five minutes, I think. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pause. I'm probably going to die. Um, let's go ahead and just speed this up times 50. And let that go. And here we go. Winner. Alrighty. Now it shows the flag. I can disable a speed hack so it doesn't drive you crazy. Alrighty. So we've decrypted the entire flag. And we can submit that. So that is my solution to the uh, the third challenge in the Flare on 7 2020 CTF. Um, there is a way I have heard someone has actually decoded the flag. Um, it must be, I think I saw it one time when I was digging through the internals. It's stored somewhere. Um, and then it's it, there's like a hashing function. If I remember right, I thought it was Murmur 3 or something. Don't quite remember because I didn't dive too deep into that solution because that was kind of after I was playing with things. Um, so this cheat engine is pretty interesting. There's actually... Um, let me see if I can load... Let me see if I can load the, the file with my other values here. Alrighty, so there's actually some more interesting things you can play with here. So we've got the scores. There's actually this variable called show info. And if we launch the game again, drag it to the right monitor and attach to it. Yep. If we actually flip this, uh, this show info to a one, we can actually get a frames per second. That's actually part of the, the NIM game engine. There's a variable for that. Uh, here's actually a pause value. If we change that to one, wait for the frog to come over here. We can actually pause the game. And there's some other va variables to play with here. We can change his jump height. Um, let's just say like 1200. Let's go ahead and unpause the game. And we jump a lot higher. Whee! We can also change the collision radius, so I can actually make it to where he doesn't collide with a block uh, if, if he's farther. We can change the initial Y. Uh, let's say he's at 200. Have to wait for him to die here. Now we're above the block, or above the ground. Here's a number of obstacles generated, I found, so that seems to be... Possibly related to the decoding. Not quite sure, um, but yeah, this is a this has been this was a pretty difficult challenge to kind of wrap your head around if you've never messed with a game engine, uh, like I haven't. Um, but then it it's one of those things where in the end it just ends up changing one assembly opcode and speed hacking to victory. <laughs> So thank you for watching. I uh, will continue this series as soon as I can. Thank you.